Somewhere in December 2022, a well-known mathematician and science popularizer John Carlos Baez made a series of posts on Mastodon, the place where people have migrated from Twitter. These posts were about Wigner crystals, which is a certain model of crystal formation involving a bunch of particles repelling each other, like electrons, trapped by an external energy field. These crystals show a lot of cool behavior, like self-organization and structural defects, and they also just look really cool. And, you know, I'm such a sucker for particle simulations and cool visualizations, so naturally I decided to drop everything I was doing at the moment and try to simulate these crystals. The first version took me about one evening, and then I've spent another day adding some optimizations. The result looks really cool and quite fun to play with for a while. I've released it on my itch.io page, it runs on Windows and Linux, and it's completely free. It is also open source, although the code is just 600 lines of unreadable mess. I've put all the links in the video description. So, Wigner crystals are cool, but this video isn't about them. You see, for quite a long time I've had this idea of making a generic particle simulator. This idea was pretty vague and I haven't really put much thought into it, considering it to be more like something I could potentially do in the future. But after working on this Wigner crystal simulator, I suddenly had an extremely clear and specific vision of what exactly this generic simulator should be. I even had a rough estimate of how long it would take. I figured two or three weeks should be enough. Quite surprisingly, the project actually took exactly three weeks from start to finish. To be honest, I was a bit unsure about this project. After all, I already have a few other things I'm working on at the moment. But eventually I decided that it would be a nice and refreshing distraction. I also kind of suck at finishing projects, and this project was an excellent opportunity to have something finished, polished and released. And so I started this project. The main simulation code was actually the easy part. I've made dozens of particle simulations in the past, and they're really easy once you know what you're doing. I've made a Twitter thread on how to make simple particle simulations that I'll link in the description. Now, the hard part was making the user interface. After all, it isn't fun if you have to edit some C++ code and recompile the project every time you want to add a new particle. The whole UI took something like two weeks to design and implement. I'm using my own small C++ game engine, which has its own really bad UI library, so it was a bit of a disaster and there are still some minor bugs in the UI, but they never break anything, so it's fine, I guess. By the way, if you want to say that I should have used Dear in GUI or something like that, I know that there are a lot of other UI libraries out there, and I've actually used many of them in the past. I simply enjoy designing and implementing things myself. I've also made a blog post about the design of my UI library, which I'll also link in the description. Finally, I added support for various rendering modes, which of course required its own UI. Like the previous project, this simulator is free to download from my itch.io page, and its source is completely open and this time it's reasonably clean and readable. All the links are in the video description. I'd be really happy if you tried to play with this simulator. Now, let me tell you what this simulator is actually capable of. First of all, it simulates particles. You can select them, move them around, delete or copy them, rotate them and make them spin or fly in a certain direction. You can see a detailed description of the current selection in the Windows selection panel. Each particle has a type, and each particle type has its own mass, radius and color. You can change these values, create new particle types and create particles of a certain type in the Window Particles panel. There are four types of interactions between particles – collisions, gravitational attraction, electrostatic forces and springs. Collisions and gravity are applied to all particles. The strength of both the collision and gravity forces can be changed in the window simulation panel. As you can see, by default there is no gravity. There is also some velocity damping and a force limit by default, to prevent the simulation from exploding. There can be as many different electrostatic forces as you wish. 
each with different properties and charges, configurable in the window Charges panel. Springs can be added between any pair of particles. The strength of all the springs is a global parameter, but the length of each spring can be different. To work the springs, open the window Springs panel. Combining springs with electrostatic forces creates some really interesting simulations. You can also add impenetrable borders so that the particles don't run away. These borders can be made of circles and polygons and can represent either obstacles or boundaries. I have actually a little over-engineered the rendering of these borders. They are rendered using a screen space sign distance field, but I think the result is worth it. The simulator also supports adding external force fields with different properties and geometry. This is what you need if you want something like a uniform downward gravity field, like the one we usually experience on Earth. I'm honestly a bit proud of how this moving arrows turned out. You can also change the appearance of the simulation in the window rendering panel. For example, you can change the background color, switch to heatmap rendering for the particles, or show a Delaunay triangulation of the particles if you want. The simulator has a built-in manual available in the Help Manual window. It covers all aspects of the simulation in much greater detail and explains some more technical stuff that I won't cover in this video. Let me show you some cool things this simulator can do. They are all available in the file Presets menu. Here is a simple gravity simulation. As you can see, the particles start forming clumps and eventually all merge together and explode. They will settle after a while though and form a single large clump. Let's shoot one of the particles right through the center. I will slow down the time and use a smaller time step to make the simulation look cooler. This is an hourglass model. This marker here indicates a gravity force field that pushes the particles downwards. We can change it to go in the opposite direction. The simulation explodes, though, probably due to the collision force being too high. Let's increase velocity damping for a moment to let it cool down. Much better. This simulation consists of a bunch of charged particles. Red particles have the charge of plus 2 and the blue particles have the charge of minus 1. As you can see, they form various funny compounds. This one lacks one blue particle. As we can see, its total charge is non-zero. On the other hand, this compound has one extra blue particle. If you put them closer together, they merge very quickly. We can try making a circular compound. The easiest way to do this is to make a long stick and then connect its two ends with a spring. Let's see if it survives hitting the wall. Mm, not really. Here is another test with the same particle types. The simulation is sped up significantly here. This one is probably my favorite. You can think of it as a two-dimensional version of a table salt crystal. The blue and red particles are almost identical here and only differ in the sign of their charge. See what happens if I push one of the border particles inside. Cool, huh? To create such a crystal, make a 2x2 two two square of these particles and then copy them as many times as you wish. Here is another simulation with the same particles. As you can see, they tend to form long stripes, bricks and circles. This is something like a sponge, made of identical particles connected by springs in a triangular grid. This is very similar to how cloth is simulated in most video games. Mm, 
My favorite thing about it is that even if you mess it up really bad, you can untangle it by simply spinning it fast enough. This one is quite complicated. It has a downward electric field and also a central gravity field that forces everything to stay on this miniature planet. These red charged particles repel each other, but they are connected with springs, so they are forced to stay together. Watch what happens when I unpause the simulation. We can even add more of these charged blobs. This one is what this project started from, a Wigner crystal simulation. It's quite fun to play with. As I've said, this whole project took me about a month, and it is my first fully released project, bigger than a game from a game jam. I think it was an excellent exercise in finishing a big project that I wanted to make for so long, and I'm happy that I've let myself spend some time on it. As I've already said, the simulator is completely free and open source. All the links are in the video description. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.